First thing we're going to talk about is setting up your resizing die. Now there are two types of resizing dies that we commonly use. One referred to as a bushing die and the other referred to as a non-bushing die. First of all, let's talk just a little bit about this. The bushing die uses a bushing that will be used to determine the amount of sizing in the neck of the cartridge. The bushing sits in the die just about like this. The advantage of the bushing die is these bushings are available in one thousandth increments in different sizes so you can easily control the amount of sizing that you get in the cartridge case neck. These are commonly used by competitive shooters and they're often used to adjust the amount of neck tension which is also the force required to seat the bullet. We'll talk a little bit more about neck tension later. The second type of die uh, is just referred to as a non-bushing die and a non-bushing die doesn't accept these bushings. The amount of sizing that it's going to do into the case neck is fixed by the internal dimensions in the die. Now, we're gonna start out with the non-bushing die and we're going to first, once you've got the die, you want to make an adjustment to the decap assembly. And what we're concerned with here is making sure that this decapping pin, which is used to punch the primer out, ex extends about the correct length from the bottom of the die. We're looking for this thing to be something about 150 thousandths or about two times the thickness of a nickel below the bottom of the die. The way this is adjusted is you unscrew the decap assembly from the die and we're going to make the adjustment with this lock nut right up here to get the, uh, to get the length that we need. You also have more adjustment if it's needed down here with this bottom lock nut, uh, which as you can see will adjust the length of the stem up and down. So what I'm going to do, first off I'm going to thread this down until it stops, back it up just a little bit, and then I'm going to tighten the lock nut right here. I'm going to take a measurement. To do this, I'm going to grab my calipers and simply measure how far the pin extends below the bottom of the die. Now this is not a real critical measurement, and as long as we're in the neighborhood, that'll be plenty suitable for us. I'm going to set my calipers on the end of the stem and use the bottom of the calipers right here to measure the distance down to the bottom of the die. As you can see, I've got about 158 thousandths of an inch. Um, I didn't plan that, but it works out good for me today, so we're going to go on because we have the adjustment where we need it as far as that goes. Next thing we're going to do is install this die into the press. Now, when you put the die into the press, you're going to want to, uh, to back it up, and this is the same whether you are using a, a coax style press or a conventional thread end press, but the die is going to be backed up and you're going to raise the ram on the press. Now right here, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the die down until it just does contact the shell holder. Once we've contacted the shell holder, I suggest backing the die up about a quarter of a turn. And this is gonna be a good starting point for us. Now, I'm gonna take the die out and secure the lock ring right here. We've got further adjustments to make, but just to keep everything uh, in place, we're gonna tighten it up. Now to size the brass, we've definitely got to know where we are on the, on the dimensions of the brass as well as where we want to go. What we're going to use for this is going to be a shoulder bump gauge. Shoulder bump gauge is included in each set of our dies. And if you don't have one, we strongly suggest it because as you'll see in just a minute, without some type of device for measuring headspace, you're not going to have any real idea of how much sizing you're doing. The shoulder bump gauge is installed on the calipers I squeeze the jaws together so that the, the bump gauge sat real square, and then I just tighten the lock ring down right there. Now we're not worried about zero in the calipers at this point. What you want to do, the shoulder bump gauge right here is going to measure from the datum line on the shoulder of the case just like this. So all you do is take the case, set it in there up to the shoulder, and close the calipers. Now one important trick is that this case needs to sit very square against the, uh, the bottom jaw of the calipers. If you'll turn the case, you can feel it sit down there good and square. All right, the shortest length measurement that you get will be the most correct one. And what I mean by that is if you inadvertently stick the case in here sideways, you're going to get a longer number, 2.604 inches in this instance. If you turn the case and get it sitting real square, you can see 2.592 inches. All right, so now that we know that we've got the case sitting real square in the gauge, on electronic calipers, this step's real easy. I suggest simply zero in the calipers on your case. 
Now it's important to take a measurement on three or four cases and get an average because they're not going to all measure exactly the same. So I'm going to set, sample three cases right here. As you can see, this case is about a half a thousand shorter than the previous one. And again, this one is also about a half a thousand shorter than the previous one. Now, you might be wondering, how much do I need to size a case? Well, the answer will vary somewhat depending on what kind of firearm you're shooting. If you're shooting a bolt action rifle, most people tend to prefer to size a case about one or two thousandths of an inch. And when I say size it, I'm referring to taking the shoulder area of the case and bumping it back down towards the base of the cartridge. One or two thousandths of sizing amount is probably not enough if you're uh, shooting any kind of repeating gun, especially an AR-15, because any repeater, they don't have the, uh, the camming power to force uh, too large of a case into the chamber. In other words, the case needs to go in very easily into the chamber of any, of any repeating and especially automatic rifle. So in that case, I would suggest that you size something like four or five thousandths of an inch to, uh, to assure easy chambering and extraction of the case. So now that I've zeroed my calipers, if I take this case, put it in this size die and bring it back out and measure again, I would like to see about negative two thousandths of an inch or 0 0.002. Now, to set this up, what we're going to do is we're going to take this case, put it in our size die and measure where we are. We're going to adjust the amount that the shoulder is bumped back by adjusting the die up and down in the lock ring, which of course is going to change the distance from the shell holder to the bottom of the case. So let's stick this one in here and size it. Now, because as you recall, we touched the shell holder and then we backed the die up, I expect that this measurement is probably going to be too long and that we will probably have to thread the die down into the press to get the sizing amount that we want. Um, don't forget to spray your cases with case lube, which is something I did beforehand. Uh, otherwise, you're real likely to stick the case in the die and that usually makes a bad rest of your day. All right, I've sized the case. And now I'm gonna stick it right back in my shoulder bump gauge, turn the case, and as you can see, I wanna point out something right here. You see we have positive 1,000th. Now, how did the case get longer when we sized it in the sizer die? The answer is this. This body portion of the case was squeezed down slightly in diameter, but the die is still sitting too high into the press. This is like squeezing a half full tube of toothpaste in the middle. When you grab that tube of toothpaste and you squeeze it in the middle, the toothpaste has to go somewhere. So it comes to the top of the tube. Same deal with this cartridge case right here. We've squeezed it in the middle and because there was space for the shoulder to move forward or to a longer headspace measurement, the shoulder has moved up on the case right here and now we have longer headspace than when we started. And again, we're looking for about negative two thousandths or so, so we've got to make an adjustment to our die. We're gonna thread the die down. Now, as far as how much to thread the die down, it's usually gonna be trial and error, but I can give you this tip right here to make things a little bit easier. Remember that we're looking for about three thousandths of adjustment right now. We would like to go from positive one thousandth down to negative two thousandths. If we were to take this die and make one complete turn in this lock ring, that would move this thing 71 thousandths of an inch. And I tell you that to illustrate that we're just going to make a very small turn of this die, um, you know, less than an eighth of a turn. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna loosen the lock ring up. I'm going to make a very small turn right here. Hopefully we'll get, uh, get pretty close to where we need to be and I'm gonna snug the lock ring back down. Install it back in your press. And I have a suggestion here from hard one experience. This case that you've already sized, it's had a lot of the case lube wiped off of it. So the smartest thing to do is to get one with a fresh coat of case lube on it and run it in this die. If you run the same case in and out of the die several times, you increase the chance that you're gonna stick that case in the die. Size the press, or excuse me, size the case. Stack it back in our calipers, measure it with the shoulder bump gauge, negative three thousandths of an inch. So we've hit it pretty close right here. 
Now, let me talk just a little bit about variation in the length. When you fired the brass, we talked about measuring about three cases or so and getting an average because they're not all gonna be the same. Well, likewise, after you size the brass, they're not all gonna be the same at this point either. So I'm sizing about one extra thousandth than what I plan to, but I'm gonna size a couple of them right here and we'll get an average and see what we get. So let's hit two more of them and then we'll measure both of those. Negative three thousandths again. Negative two thousandths. So we get an average of about two and two thirds of a thousandth of sizing. Now, as you all know, a couple of thousandths is a very small number. The average piece of paper is about three thousandths thick. So keep in mind that we're working with some very small amounts right here. Um, and you know, the last half thousandth or even one thousandth on this sizing, probably not a real big deal to us. For my own ammunition, I'm plenty comfortable with this and ready to go forward. So now that we've got this set up, I want to also demonstrate one other thing, uh, which is our Widden Gunworks case gauge. The case gauge also gives you a headspace measurement in the same way that our shoulder bump gauge does, but the difference is the case gauge is calibrated with the headspace gauges, the same headspace gauges that are used for chamber and rifles. And this is going to give us a dimension relative to SAMI specifications. So I'm gonna first take a fired case right here, drop it in the gauge, and we thread the cap down on the gauge on this case right here. Now, the mark on the cap right here is uh, between four and five thousandths. That means that this case, when it was fired in this chamber, it expanded to about four or five thousandths, four to five thousandths larger than the SAMI minimum headspace. This is perfectly acceptable and well within the tolerance on rifles. Now, we can also use this gauge, and I'm gonna take one of the cartridge cases that we just sized right here. When we measured the first one right there with this bump gauge, we had between four and five thousandths. Now, if we subtract a couple of thousandths for our sizing amount, uh, this case measures about two thousandths. So as you can see, we've bumped the shoulder back by a couple of thousandths right here. This also shows us that it is still slightly longer than the SAMI minimum. That's acceptable because we're going to be shooting this brass back in the same gun, and the setup procedure that I'm giving you is for setting up to load ammunition to shoot back in the same rifle, which is the best plan for maximum accuracy.